Okay, class, I want to make a quick video today on uh, the homework that we have. So I'm going to do a couple examples here and let you know what I want you to find. So let's say that I have a data set of just, let's say, you know, test scores in a statistics class or something like that. So let's, let's just do something pretty simple, like five scores. So what I would do is I would have data set. So in your homework, I'll have data set one, two, and three. So you're gonna do this for each one of those data sets. So this data set here, let's say that someone made a 70, someone made an 84, someone made a 54, and then we had someone who made a 100, and then we had a 67. So that's gonna be our, our scores. So when I say find N, N is going to be the symbol for how many data points that you have. So I have one, two, three, four, and five. So N is gonna equal five. Now, uppercase N is always going to represent population data, and lowercase N is going to represent sample data, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But for this homework, just um, assume, let's just assume that all this data that we have is going to be population data. So you will make no adjustments. You'll go ahead and just use all of the data points that you have. So the next thing we need to find is the mean or mu. So mu is going to be the sum, and we are going to use a symbol for the sum, and that's going to be uppercase sigma. It's going to look like a an E. So that is going to represent the sum of all of our X's, and X is going to represent each one of these data points, all five of them. So all of the X's divided by N. So we're going to sum all of our X's, and when we do that, let's go ahead and do that first. I left my phone in my office, or my calculator, so I'll have to use this. Okay, so we have 70, now I'm going to add these up, sum them, plus 84, plus 54, plus 100, plus 67, and I get 375. That's the sum, 375 is going to be the sum of all the x's, 375. And I'm going to divide that by n, which is 5, so when I do that, 375 divided by 5, I get a value of 75. So 75 is going to be our mean, our average. So the average, mu, is going to be 75. Now in order for us to move forward, I asked you for another, uh, I wanted you to find the mode. Well, the mode is the value that occurs more often than any other value or the number that is repeated more than any other number and in this case we don't have a number that is repeated so we don't have a mode so no mode the median so the median is our middle value so if I take this data and I rank it from low to high, and I can go ahead and do that now. It looks like 54 is our smallest number, and then my next number will be 67, and then I have a 70, and then an 84, and a 100. So I've ranked this data from low to high, and I find that my middle value here is 70. So 70 is going to be my median. Now if I had another number out here, let's say another 100, then I would take 70 and 84, add those two numbers together and divide by two to get that middle value here if I had another 100, or if I had a 54, I would just move it, or let's say a 50, I would just move it back this way and find that middle value. So in this case, with this data, 70 is gonna be my median. I also talk about the range, and we already know how to do that, from our first homework assignment. So our range 
is the highest number, which in this case is 100, minus our lowest number, which is 54. So I'll go ahead and calculate that for you. Pretty, pretty easy to do. So 100 minus 54 is 46. So our range is equal to 46. These are called measures of central tendency because they, they uh, kind of are values in the middle of a distribution. Now, a lot of times, and I'll talk about this later on, you know, our average or our mean may not be the best indicator of the true middle of a distribution of scores. So we'll, we'll talk, we'll discuss that later on. So we've got all that information. So the next thing we probably need to do is go ahead and try to find uh, values of variance. Lowercase sigma squared is going to be variance, and that's how much variation there is within this set of data. And then I want to find what's called the standard deviation, and that's represented by a lowercase sigma. So in order to get the standard deviation, I have to take the square root of my variance. And that gives me what's called the standard distance from the mean. I standardize that distance from the actual mean of 75. In order for us to be able to do that, I have to use a uh, formula, and that formula is gonna look like this. I'm going to sum all of the x's, and I'm gonna subtract the mean from that. I'm gonna square that, and then I'm gonna come in and divide that by n. So that's gonna give me my variance. Now in order to get the, the, the standard deviation, like I say, I have to take the square root of that variance. So let's go ahead and do that now because that's what I'm wanting you to do for those three data sets on the homework. So I know what my mean is. I'm looking at this formula and it's saying to sum all of the x's and then I have to subtract the mean from that. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know that my mean is 75. So I will take 75 from 70, 75 from 84, 75 from 54, 75 from 100, and 75 from 67. Now you can arrange this data from low to high, and in this case it really doesn't matter because we're gonna be dealing with uh, deviation scores. So I'll show you kind of how that works. So the first set here, 70 and 75, so I'm gonna take 70 and subtract 75 from that, and I get a value of negative five. So what that is saying is that score of 70 deviates five places negatively, or five negative places from the mean. So it's a deviation score. Now I'm gonna do the next one, which is 84 minus 75. Now I get nine, positive nine. So it deviates nine scores to the positive side. I'll do the same for 54. 54 minus 75 is a negative 21. Go ahead and do the next. 100 minus 75, of course that's 25. And our last but not least is 67 minus 75, negative eight. Now, the next thing this formula tells us to do is it tells us to go ahead and square, because we're using what's called the op order of operation here. So I'm gonna do everything in the uh, percent, uh, parentheses first, and then I'm gonna go to my exponent here, which is a squared deviation score. So I'm gonna come in here and square each one of these deviation scores. Now, I'll give you a little, uh, a little hint here on how to make sure that you've done this correctly is I will go ahead and add these up, sum those deviation scores, and when you sum those deviation scores, you should get a value of zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative five, let's see if I can do that on my phone here. Okay, negative five plus nine plus negative 21, plus 25, plus a negative eight, is equal to 
zero. I got a zero. Yay, I'm happy. So I'll put a happy face there. Now, what happens when I square a negative score, it'll turn into a positive score. So I don't have to worry about all these negatives. And that's what the statisticians, they said, well, you know, I got, I got these negative scores. How do I get rid of the negative scores? Well, I'll, just, I, I'll square them. So that will get rid of those. So when I do that, I will get what's called squared, uh, squared deviation scores. So if I square, I'm trying to figure out how to do this, square five, it's 25. Nine squared is 81. 21 squared is 441. And 25 squared is 625. And then 8 squared is 4. Those are my square deviation scores. We're getting rid of negative scores this way. So we've got these huge numbers. And when we get our variance, it's going to be a large number. So in order for things to make sense, we shrink that number down by using you know, what's called the square root of that, you know, variance, and that gives us a smaller number that we can standardize that distance from the mean. So if I have 25 plus 81 plus 441 plus 625 plus 64 gives me a value of 1,236, and that's going to be our numerator over here for our formula, 1,236 over 5. So that, when I do that, is going to be my variance. So I'll go ahead and write that over here. My variance is going to be equal to, basically, you know, I'm breaking this down. So that's what we're going to wind up with. So when I do 1,236 and I divide that by n, which is 5, I get 247.2. 247.2 is our variance. Now in order to get the square, to take, to have, in order to get the standard deviation, I have to take the square root of that. So let me figure, see if I can figure that out on my phone here. I get square root. I don't usually use my phone. I know it can do it. Okay, let's see if I can figure this out. Two, four, seven. like I've got 15.722. So 15.722 is going to be my standard deviation. So that's what we're going to do for each set, each one of those sets in our homework. We're going to find n, figure out what that is. Then we're going to find our mode. In this case, we have no mode. You just report no mode. We're going to find our median. We're going to find our range. And then we'll start this formula, which is going to be the sum of all of our x's minus our average, the mean, mu. And then we're going to square those deviation scores. We're going to divide it by n, which in this case is 5. That will give us what's called our variance. Then we take the square root of our variance in order to get that standardized distance from the mean, which is called the standard deviation. So that's what we've done here in this little, uh, this little exercise. So this is how I do it. Now, if you go on YouTube and, and look at some other people that do this, they might do it vertically across the board, which is fine. If that makes more sense to you, I do things 
I mean, horizontally across the board. I do things vertically. It doesn't matter. Whatever makes more sense to you is the way you should do this. But in order to uh, get the results that you want, you know, it, it doesn't matter how you do it. it, it you know, if you do it vertically like I do, or if you do it horizontally across the board, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I, for me, this is easier. But if you have questions, just shoot me an email. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. If you want to come up here and, and work some of these out, I'll be happy to do that as well. So, uh, look forward to making the next video for you. Bye.